why didn't Russia engage in naval colonialism and imperialism? That's an interesting question, great question. We have powers. We have states like Spain, Portugal, England, the Dutch, the, da the Danes, etc., who tried to engage in naval colonialism and imperialism. The Spaniards, they conquered the Americas and did all, did all kinds of fantastic, wonderful, wonderfully barbaric things there. They wiped out entire populations, the genocided entire populations. The uh, Portuguese went eastwards and they discovered, discovered India. And then they tried similar barbaric things in India. Then you had the, the Dutch who also came to India, who also went, who also went to the, in, the Indonesian islands and tried similar things there with less success. Then you had the Danes who also had an East India Company, the Danish East India Company. And then you had the English who did untold brutality and barbarism, not just in India, but also in the Americas. And all of these, um, these empires, or these, these uh, colonial powers were naval in nature. But then you have Russia. And Russia doesn't do any of that. And the question is why? Why didn't Russia start an East India Company and send ships to India? Why didn't they do that? Well, there's multiple answers for that. And the biggest clues lie in geography. Let's take a look at the map so that we understand what we are dealing with here. We're dealing with Russia. Now, so here's a map of Eurasia. Now, the original Russia, okay, from 500 years ago, was simply uh, what what is now Ukraine and uh, the Moscow region, okay, more or less. Ukraine was called Ukraina at the time, which means the borderlands. The borderlands of what? The borderlands of Russia. The original capital of the Rus people was Kiev. K I E V, Kiev. And then later, after the end of the Mongol yoke, the capital became, became Moscow, Muscovy. And then from there, the, the Russian Empire started expanding. Okay, now if you look at the geography, so originally 500 years ago, roughly, Russia was this small region, and all of this Russia today was non-Russian. You had no Russians present, Russian presence there. And then in the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th centuries, the Russians started expanding eastwards, further and further eastwards. They came into conflict with the Tatars, uh, significant conflicts with the Tatars in Omsk. Where is Tomsk? Tomsk over here, Krasnoyarsk, the Red City, and so much more. And they kept on going eastwards. And uh, so that was their modus operandi. If you look at Russia, okay, even if you look at modern Russia today, which stretches from uh, Eastern Europe all the way to the far east of Asia, you will see that they have ports like Murmansk, which is uh, in the Barents Sea. Um, the USSR had ports like Esto, you know, Riga, Tallinn, etc. And eventually you had uh, Konigsberg or Kaliningrad. But all of these ports in the Baltic Sea, once again, the ports that Russia had, they are frozen for a significant portion of the year. The ports in the Arctic Circle, they are also frozen most of the year. And the ports that they have in the far east of Russia, even Vladivostok, even these ports are frozen you know, for significant portions of every year. So when you have no access to warm water ports, when you don't have access to the open oceans, maybe the, um, either the Atlantic or the Pacific Oceans, then how do you become a naval, a major naval power? You can't. It's not possible. Icebreaker technology, even today you can't use it to, you know, you can use icebreakers only for very specific tasks, for very specific purposes. You can't have a new, I mean, you have nuclear icebreakers and all, but icebreakers are a very specialized kind of ships a kind of ship and they can't be used for multiple purposes so and before the 20th century icebreakers don't even exist 
that's why russia never became a major naval power they decided to become a continental power a eurasian power and they kept expanding eastwards 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 they kept gobbling up territories um that 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 belong to the various turkic peoples like the tatars like the tungusic peoples like the mongolians north of mongolia is another part of mongolia which is now part of russia and all the way further east further east further east all the way and you know up to the far east of russia which abuts on the uh, on the uh, western pacific coast so that was a deal with russia and russia what what was the financial impetus or incentive for colonizing for being a continental colonizing power it was the fur trade okay the fur trade fueled all of this colonizing and eventually the russians did occupy did establish a colony on a different continent which was alaska all right but then by the by the roughly middle of the 18th century 19th century middle of the 19th century when the fur trade started, started binding down and when the russians started facing pressure from the americans and the british in alaska they decided that instead of fighting for alaska let's just sell it off to the americans and that's what they did so they gave up the colony they had established very large colony of alaska and there were times when the russians had a reasonably powerful navy but that navy was deployed in the black sea in uh, the baltic sea etc for mainly defensive purposes and also sometimes in the mediterranean sea via the bosphorus the strait of the dardanelles gallipoli etc so that was the thing um geography tells us that it was not possible for russia to become a major naval power and that's one of the reasons one of the factors that contributed to the decline and eventual dissolution of the ussr that the anglo saxon empire controlled the oceans and the trade routes they had unfettered access to all the oceans the pacific ocean the atlantic ocean the mediterranean sea even the indian ocean right and the russians did not have access to any proper warm water port and that explains a lot why russia did not engage in naval colonialism and imperialism russia was an imperialistic power i'm not sure if it still is some people would like to say it is but historically it was it was an expansionist empire and it expanded in a continental fashion not intercontinentally through naval operations naval operations are very expensive and you need to be really good at logistics and what not to uh, succeed at that which is something only the british were able to do eventually so russia adopted a totally different approach and it was very successful at that